It's Sunday, May 24th here at the West End Gun Club. I'm not here to shoot a little 22 like I normally do as of late, but what I'm gonna try to do is just run through the May 2020 NRL 22 course of fire. Today's the fourth Sunday of the month and we would usually hold a match, but right now matches are postponed or sort of deferred right now while we're still working through you know, COVID-19 uh, protocols here in California. Um, we're not holding matches right now because of the whole issue of gatherings and um, how to facilitate matches while still abiding by state regulations or state policies right now. Um, not sure how long this is gonna last because we're all eager to shoot some matches, but given what's going on as far as uh, you know, state guidance and, and certain liabilities that could take place for the club, it's probably best not to have matches right now. Anyway, um, like I said, I'm gonna run through the May course of fire. So I'm just gonna try to get the props I need. And then I'm not gonna set up all the stages, I think at one time, I'm just gonna set up one stage or two stages and then shoot them and then just go out there and reset targets. But I need some props. So I came here to the contents container. Um, this ladder right there, I'm gonna grab that. And I'm gonna, I think I need the tank trap today, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and lug those over there. And then uh, we'll get set up and start shooting. Took me a few minutes to get three stages set up. Set up the paper stage since that's easiest. I mean, you got all you gotta do is set up a 50 yard paper target. Then I set up two of the course, two of the stages in the course of fire that are steel, um, not the KYLs. I'll do those ones later. But um, I think one of them, one of the stages, the paper stage requires the requires a ladder, and then one of the steel stages requires the tank trap, which I have set up next to me. Um, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, get my my dope card holder set up. I can get it in here. And uh, crap. So one thing I don't like about this, uh, I mean, typically you want to just keep it on all the time. This Blam Industries, Blam? Blam, God, I can't remember the name. I can't remember the name of the company. But the, uh, usually you just want to keep it on. I have one that sits, that can uh, clamp to the scope tube, which I might just switch to because this is a pain in the ass to keep taking this uh, thing on and off. Um, you can just leave it on because the arm flexes, but sometimes I just want to take it off because I just don't want it in the way when I'm doing non NRL 22 shooting. So I may just switch to the scope clamp version. I'm gonna run through the May 2020 NRL 22 course of fire as if it were a match. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot each stage and I'm gonna take my score for that stage and we'll tally it up at the end of the range vlog and then we'll take that as my aggregate score as if I shot the match. Um, so in treating this as a match, I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly sight in, just make sure my zero is fine. Uh, you know, I shoot like 10 or 20 rounds. Usually I only shoot 10 rounds, I'll run through a mag real quick, um, like before the match when we're uh, in our zeroing period. Well, I'll go ahead and do that and then um, we'll start shooting a few of the stages. In case you missed a recent blog post that I had uh, last week, I did publish a write-up on the AGS Precision insert for the Pelican 1020 micro cases. And so, Many of you are well aware that the Pelican micro case, the 1020, can hold three boxes of SK or Lapua ammo, just straight up. You just insert, put it in the in the micro case, and it fits perfectly. This is really cool. I mean, it's pretty handy. But I saw that this company called AGS Precision makes an insert for the 1020 micro case, and basically, it's a uh, another insert that sits in the insert. And so you can place three Lapu or SK boxes into this tray that you squeeze into here because you have basically the micro case insert or the here, and then you have the AGS precision insert on top of that, and it just fits in there snugly. And you might not be able to see it, but so you'll need to go visit my article and check the pictures there. But there's like these ridges on the bottom of this tray so that it 
keeps the SK or Lapua trays elevated so that the bullets do not impact, they don't touch the bottom of the tray. So it kind of floats it up there, it's perfect so you don't, if you dropped it, the ammo would still be safe, the bullets wouldn't hit the side of the cardboard. Like if I drop this, technically the bullets are freely moving and they'll hit the bottom of the box and hit the insert. Granted the insert's rubber, so it should be okay. Um, but this gives you that added sense of security and then you have this little insert that fits on the top that pretty much, uh, there's rubber on the back side of that, but basically just presses down and it's snug, it's snug so it doesn't shake and there's no, uh, the bullets are free floated on top of the top of the insert or the bottom of the tray. So it's really nice and I just put the, I cut out the box of the ammo so I know what lot it is, so I have the lot number right there. But this is pretty cool, it's Aegis Precision. A little pricey, 20 bucks for the insert. That's not counting the actual Pelican case itself. But you can get the Pelican cases off Amazon for about 15 bucks, give or take, depending on the day, if there's uh, what the pricing is and what color you want. But the yellow ones are pretty inexpensive. I think they run for about $13 before tax. And if you have Amazon Prime, you got free shipping. Then, so you add the insert, that's 20 bucks plus shipping or whatever. So you're looking at about maybe 40, $42 per, per setup like this. It's a little expensive in, just to carry 150 rounds of 22 ammo, but I just think it's a, a novel way for those of you who have, like to have interesting gear in your kit. This is pretty cool. So um, check it out, AGS Precision, go look at my article and then there should be a link on the, where to get it. So um, yeah. That's kind of the, uh, what I wanted to show off this morning as far as some new gear. First stage of fire that I'm going to run through is called No More Paper, which is the paper stage. I believe they called it No More Paper simply because there's no longer going to be paper stages in the NRL 22 course of fire in the upcoming season, the 2020-2021 season. So we're shooting 50 yards, 2-inch paper target. It's got the 10, 8, 6, and 4-point rings. 10 rounds, 120 seconds, sling in one bag allowed. Got my sling in the bag. You're gonna start standing, rifle in hand, mag in, action open. On signal, shooter will take an unsupported seat position and engage the top two paper targets with two shots each. There's four targets, so top two, two shots each from seated. Shooter will then take a kneeling position, support the rifle on top of the sawhorse and engage the next two paper targets. So I think the bottom two paper targets with two shots each. The shooter will then take a prone unsupported position and engage the last paper target, so oh, with two shots. So top two uh, seated, Four rounds, two, two, one, two, three, four, from seated, sawhorse, uh, one, two, three, four, and then back to prone, last target, two shots. So you should have four shots on the bottom target. So you're gonna have two, 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 and four. Should be relatively simple, I think. But let's go ahead and run through it, and we'll see where we go from here. The next stage of fire we're gonna shoot is let's get comfy. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. Basically a uh, single 93 yard two inch target. One bag allowed. 
Standing rifle in hand, mag in, action open. On signal, shooter will take a seated position and shoot from the ladder rung of their choice with two shots support side. So if you're a right-handed shooter, you're gonna shoot from the left side. If you're left-handed shooter, you're gonna shoot from the right side. Shooter will then alternate to the strong side with two shots and continue to alternate back and forth until shots, all shots have been fired or time expired. Seated means the shooter's butt is directly on the ground. Seems simple enough. Uh, I did have I did notice one issue when I was uh, when I went to just prep this stage um, that ladder the other side that little bar right there is actually because we're shooting at an angle it's kind of obscuring the target a little bit uh, depending on how tall your bag is so it's in this interesting predicament uh, had I prepped this stage beforehand like I would normally have done I probably would have figured out a way to get the target a little bit lower on the ground um, I have it on a single hanger at the top so um, but we'll deal with it. Um, if anything, I could also angle the ladder up a little bit just so you get that rung, the rungs angled up. Um, I'm not sure I can do that right now. I won't bother. But we're gonna just shoot it. Let me get my timer. impact 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 Impact. Impact. Just barely. Target's moving on the hanger. Swinging side to side. Impact. 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 All rounds complete. It's pretty easy. It's like 97 seconds, roughly. Uh, so it's a clean run. That was a really easy one to do. Um, let me make sure I read that right. Yeah. So yeah, that was 10 rounds. Two shots strong support side, then two shots strong side, and keep going. So you're going to do two... Two uh, support, two strong, two support, two strong, two support. So you finish on the support side. Pretty easy run. Two inch target, 93 yards. So it's a clean run. I'm going to go ahead and shoot this stage of fire one more time since I have the ladder set up. But I'm going to use a different bag. So one of our Canadian brethren sent me a couple bags. He made them himself. He asked me if I wanted, if I could test them out for him. He sent them to me a couple months ago. Unfortunately, when we went to shut down, I didn't really have the time to come out to the range. Number one, wanted to be respectful of when things really shut down in March and April. So I didn't really come to the range to, and I didn't really take the, you know, come out here for extended periods of time to, and was able to try and shoot these uh, off these bags. But sent me a couple bags, so I feel bad that I haven't had a chance to test them out. So I brought them out with me today. And this one is kind of a, kind of a clone of the Game Changer. It's just a wedge type, type bag. Um, I, I kind of like the feel of it. It's just Cordura. It's not like the wax canvas. It's definitely lighter, about maybe two thirds of the weight, but want to try it out. It seems pretty cool. Um, but I'm going to run through this stage of fire with this bag and see how it goes. Impact. 
impact. Impact. Impact. Impact. Impact. Impact. Impact. Just barely. I saw the round just ricochet and hit wide right. Impact. Impact. Clean run. This bag's actually not bad. Um, the one thing about this bag compared to the Game Changer bag that I'm running, this is really heavy and dense, which is good. But I think with a wide rung like this, I think this one shapes a little bit better, to be honest. I, well, it just fits on there a little bit more, more state, more with more stability, because I think it just uh, the what, how dense this 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 bag is uh, filled. It it really doesn't shape well to that wide rung, so it's not as stable like this bag is. So this is pretty cool. It's kind of like a it's kind of a hybrid. It's almost like a wee bad, which I don't have my. I don't have the uh, fortune cookie here with me. It's kind of like a, a hybrid of a wee bad fortune cookie and the game changer, the razor, razor precision slash Armageddon gear game changer. So I'm not sure if I would want this filled with a heavier fill. I think I like this. It's actually, it's actually pretty cool. I like this one. Pretty interesting bag. Um, it's got two handles, three handles, one on each side, and then a top handle, which I do appreciate the top handle, which the Game Changer does not have. Not bad. The third stage of fire we're gonna run through, it's called Social Distance This. And they literally threw a loop in this whole course of fire by adding a loop rope with a loop on the end attached to the tip of the tank trap. So anyway, 120 second part time, 10 rounds, three targets, two inch at 61 yards, one and a half inch at 73 yards, and two and a half inch at 100 yards. One bag allowed, shooter will start standing, rifle in hand, mag in, action open. On signal, shooter will take a position on the center of the tank trap and engage the 100 yard target with two shots. Shooter will then transition to one of the tank traps, tank trap tips, doesn't matter which one. 73 yard target, two shots. Shooter will then transition to the looped rope from the tank trap trip, ah, tank trap, tank trap tip and engage the 61 yard target with one shot. Shooter will then re-engage all the targets in the same order in the same manner. So two, two, one, two, two, one. Pretty simple. Um, I tried to put that loop on there. I didn't even bother to test it out yet. So we'll see if this, if this, uh, the loop holds. Um, I would probably take a little bit more time to secure that better. I have these brackets that fit on, on a four x four that I'll probably use, but they're in my truck. I drove the Jeep today, so I don't have them with me. Um, but had I had time to plan the stage out in this, uh, the stage in the course of fire, I would have definitely come up with a better way to secure that, that rope. Anyway, we'll run my normal gear, Armageddon bag. And I think I know the course of fire. So wait, uh, 100 yard, 73 yard, 61 yard. Impact. 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 
just barely graze that one. Wow, this is pretty sketch. Missed. Impact. Barely grazed. Impact. 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 Just barely grazing those last shots. Wow, time. That was rough. Transitions actually uh, make a difference there. So minus two, I didn't make the shots from the loop. Barely grazed two of those rounds though. Not one I'm sure not getting solid impacts. Okay, so drop two points on social distance this. I'm gonna do it one more time with the other bag just for fun. Um, with the, uh, the one for, that was sent to me. And we'll move on to the next stage. Actually, I need to set up the next two stages because I don't, I didn't bring all of my targets out at once. So let me uh, shoot one more stage while I have the tank trap here and we'll uh, move on to the next two stages. Impact. Impact. <sighs> Impact. I need to paint that target. Can barely see it. Impact. How am I gonna shoot this? Ice, miss. Whew. Impact. Impact, just barely. Impact. Time. Let me take this round anyway. Still missed. That definitely is the uh, difficult aspect of this stage. Anyway, both times ran it, minus two, minus two rounds, both on the loop. All right, let's go, and, uh, go out there. I'll rearrange the targets so I can shoot the final, the other two stages. The next course of fire I'm gonna run through is pretty straightforward. It's called the COVID Tussle. Got four targets, one inch at 48, 1.5 at 68, 2.5 at 78, 3 inch at 98. 10 rounds, 120 second part time. Bag, uh, sorry, one bag allowed. Start standing, rifle grounded, mag in action open. So the rifle is going to be grounded, so you should probably just stage it for the first target. On signal, shooter will assume a prone position. 
and engage each target from far to near with one shot, then near to far, then far to near. So 98, 78, 68, 48, then 48, 68, 78, 98, then 98, and 78. It's 10 rounds total. So smart thing to do is to go ahead and get the target, since you're gonna start grounded, uh, get, the, get the rifle on target so you're ready to shoot. Make sure your parallax is set. Pretty simple. Those are all impacts. Uh, that course of fire is so easy. I think the only problem is for people who just have a hard time adjusting parallax. Um, and if you want to hold over or hold under, I'm dialing, so it's not a big deal to me. I'm gonna shoot it one more time. I'm gonna try different. I'm gonna try the other bag. Um, the uh, the test bag that I got. So we'll run this one instead. But no, no rounds dropped on this stage. Uh oh, my target's about to fall over. There it is. Barely hit that one. I don't know why it didn't make much of an impact. All right, let's get this into our target. Impact. Okay. Easy. My 73 yard target is about to fall over. Clean. So, anyway, over tussle, pretty straightforward stage of fire. Pretty easy, just to shoot. Not much, uh, depending on how your match director set up the targets, um, it should be really easy. This one's a little added difficulty because he had to kind of shift the rifle going near to far to near. The targets are not in line. One more stage. The last stage of fire we're going to run through is called the KYL Havoc. I've got two sets of targets KYL at 35 yards, that's the half inch and a quarter inch, 80 yards, the, 70, uh, the quarter, three quarters inch, and the one inch KYL. So 35, 80. 10 rounds, 120 second part time. Um, so apparently I need three bricks. I'm too lazy to walk over the contents container, so I just set up my my uh, 
one of my range bags and my ammo can with my targets in it to use two bricks. But here's how it's going to go. Um, rifle in, rifle grounded, mag in, action open. On signal, shooter will assume a prone support position and engage 35 KYL one shot each. So hit both KYL targets. That's one shot each. Shooter will then get up and move the brick from the designated area 10 feet away next to the rifle. So I don't know where the brick starts. Shooter will get up and move the brick from the desert from the designated area area next to the rifle. The shooter will engage the ADR KYL one shot each. Shooter will get up and move the second brick from the designated area next to the rifle and engage 35 yard KYL one shot each. Shooter will get up and move the third brick from the designated area next to the rifle and engage the ADR KYL one shot each. The shooter will get up and then move the third brick from the third brick from next to the rifle to the designated area and engage. 35 yard target. So you're gonna shoot, grab a brick, shoot, grab a brick, shoot, grab a brick, shoot, move the brick, and shoot again. Let's go ahead and use this bag as my third brick. Or one of my bricks. Missed. Minus one. Okay, so missed one, minus three. Three rounds dropped. Wasted a lot of time. I think uh, elevation and parallax. Let me write this down before I forget how much I dropped. So minus three on KYL Havoc. Social distancing, I dropped two and everything else. The other two stages were clean. Except the paper stage hasn't been scored, so yeah. I'm gonna run this one one more time. Uh, first time I ever run this stage before, so let me. Uh, I'm gonna take this. Except this is my score because I said I was gonna be honest about it. But I'm gonna go ahead and I want to shoot it one more time to see how I can optimize it. And I'm gonna try this other bag too when I do this. I'm honestly I'm liking this bag. It's a little bit more more uh, flexible. For this, for the way we're shooting on this uh, incline, but I need more ammo.
barely impacted that one. Barely made that one. <laughs> nah, I missed one. That last shot wouldn't have counted. So here's a close up of my paper target from the paper stage. Uh, full disclosure, I did throw the third round, which was supposed to go here, so it doesn't count for anything. Um, so I was fortunate. I was surprised I hit two tens. My sitting position was pretty bad. Um, then it went to crap when I transitioned down to the next target. But two rounds, two rounds, two rounds, four rounds, 20, ra 20 points, four points, 18 points for a 10 and an eight. Um, I barely broke the ring here, if you guys want to be subjective about it. Um, I counted that as an eight, not a six. So eight, eight, six, and a four. 26 points so all total 68 points on the paper stage then on the aggregate i cleaned two stages 100 100 dropped two on one steel stage that's 80 points dropped three on another paper, uh, steel stage that's 70 points and then my paper stage is 68 and if my math is right i only shot a 418 which isn't all that great um yeah these two ideally i like to clean all the steel the steel target stages i mean it's just the way it is paper stages you try to clean them but at the same time um, you're trying to aim for precision here and, and it, you tend to time out on paper stages. Um, but anyway, so I shot a 418, let me double check my math again. So 80, 70, 68, uh, 15 plus six, 21. Yeah. 418. Uh, not a great score. It's respectable, but if you guys, uh, are curious if anyone else shot the May 2020 course of fire at NRL 22, if you shot it officially or unofficially, just curious to know what your score was, but shot a 418. Um, and I kind of open class, so yeah, that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna shoot a little bit more, maybe, and then um, clean up and get out of here. It's almost 10.30, packed up, about to get out of here. I did want to go ahead and show up kind of a close up of that bag, or uh, two bags that uh, uh, this person sent me, uh, reached out to me on YouTube, uh, after we kind of traded comments on YouTube. Uh, this person, I'll, I'll link to his channel. He has some videos up. Uh, he's been, he's in Canada and he's been shooting their equivalent of NRL 22 over there. Uh, so he's got, I think he went to CZ457 in an uh, MDT chassis, which is pretty cool. Um, but he made, he made some bags and uh, he asked me if I'd be interested in trying out some designs. And he sent me this one, which I haven't really gotten the opportunity to play around with yet. Um, but this one I messed around with today is sort of like a, it looks kind of like an equivalent of the Razor Precision Game Changer, um, the pint size model. I don't have a pint size in Cordura, I only have the wax canvas. I don't even know if they make a pint size Cordura, I think they do. But um, I'm kind of liking this, the Cordura version um, in certain scenarios over this, my game, my game Changer pint size wax canvas. This is a really heavy fill, this was a light fill. And this thing shapes a little bit better, especially um, when I'm using it as a rear bag on the ground as like a kind of a, a sliding, uh, sorry, a bunny ear bag style. Um, it's not, I can kind of get it such that it thins out really like a lot. And so I'm able to utilize this on our range here at the West End Gun Club, the room part range when I'm shooting at an angle, because when I'm shooting at the 100 yard or the elevated targets or whatever, I can get my, my stock kind of dug in a little bit closer to the ground with this bag. So I'm liking this design. Um, it's almost like a fortune cookie, except the fortune cookie feels a little bit more different when it when it wedges um, as a rear bag. So, um, 
yeah not sure what else to say about this this is pretty cool um i might get i might get another game change i'm going to look and see if the pipe size game changers made with a court in cordura with a light fill because i think it might actually serve me better as a rear bag um for this range specifically simply because of the the logistics on how i have to shoot at an angle um but generally i like this maybe it's be, if this fill i like the heavy fill i love it but maybe if there's less of it i guess in such a way that it thins out a little bit better i'm not entirely sure i'm just able to get this to squeeze down faster than this one um, in the prone position. Anyway, that's kind of it for today. Uh, not much else to say. I know a lot of people reached out to me asking me if we're, when we're going to run an NRL 22 match. Really can't tell you. Um, I think I got bit by some. Um, just the things that they are, the way they are right now in California. I know the restrictions are starting to lessen, but the big problem is. Uh, the issue of gatherings, right? And by definition, if I hold them, if we hold a match and it's open for registration, you submit a fee, by definition, that's an event and we would call that a gathering. I don't know, people wanna argue the, that's not a gathering. Frankly, I think, I, if, if, I'm not a master of the English language, but I would define that as a gathering. Um, because people are trying to compare that to just a bunch of people going to the range together and shooting. Well, that's a bunch of your friends getting together. Um, it's not, it's not enough, it's not, it was organized by yourselves and you guys are responsible for that. But as far as me as a match director, if I were to hold a match at this club, right now, it would be really, uh, it would be in such a gray area as far as, um, you know, COVID-19 protocols. I know a lot of people are kind of annoyed by this whole aspect and they don't like being told what to do by the government. Um, I have mixed feelings about this whole, this whole scenario um, in terms of infections and whatnot. And I'm, you know, I do my best not to, uh, not to spread things around. So I've isolated myself um, in the past two months in terms of limiting my movements and only going to the store when I need to get stuff, um, like home improvement stuff, uh, pipe burst in the house. I had to go fix that, and you know, groceries and stuff like that. But I've come out the range a couple times, but I was by myself in a quiet area, um, in the rimfire range, no one else around. So I've been, uh, you know, cognizant of that. But anyway. I don't want to get too deep in the weeds and all, all this stuff because I know it's just, it gets, becomes didactic and I don't want to make a, turn this into a whole COVID-19 video. But anyway, just to say that I don't know what's going to go on for June. Um, if and when we do hold a match, I'll be sure to advertise that and hopefully we can, we can have a match soon where everyone can be safe and we're not violating any sort of uh, state, county, or city mandates. Uh, anyway. That's kind of it for now. Um, I really need to get out to Desert Marksman Range because I really want to shoot uh, 400, 500 yards right now with the new setup with my 60 mm base. Uh, that may happen the first week of June when I can get some time off during the week. There's a lot of mosquitoes out here, it flies. Um, so yeah, we'll see if I can get out to the Desert Marksman Range and shoot 400 and 500. Uh, and if you have any other questions, I know people have been reaching out to me, asking me some questions about random stuff, um, firearms related, of course. You know, magneto speed versus lab radar, um, NRL 22 gear, voodoo's, CZ stuff. Just feel free to reach out to me on YouTube, or you, you can find my website, okabj.net. You can reach out to me through that because I have a comments page or a, a contact form, and uh, you can uh, ask questions there, and I'll feel, I'll answer them um, as best I can. So today is uh, Sunday, May 24th, day before Memorial Day. I hope everyone has a great Memorial Day weekend. Uh, if you have the opportunity, head out to the cemetery to visit your friends and family uh, who served. Definitely do that. Um, I'm going to probably do that today when, after I get back home and ditch my gear. Um, go visit my grandfather and uh, thank him for what he did for our country. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next vlog. On signal, shooter will take a position on the center of the tank trap, and am I going to shoot my camera? Probably, probably not. I'm going to move this camera over.